like emerald lightning. Ching Dai, make me flesh again soon. Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and today we'll be taking a look at Lopan and the Three Storms as featured in John Carpenter's 1986 action comedy, Big Trouble in Little China, starring Kurt Russell, Dennis Dunn, Kim Cattrall, Victor Wong, and the legendary James Hong as Lopan. David Lopan was essentially a dark sorcerer and the main antagonist of the 1986 classic that was usually accompanied by his three henchmen named Thunder, Lightning and Rain, who together formed a deadly trio known as the Storms. Centuries before the events featured in the film, Lopan was a great warrior and wizard who sought to expand his reach and power across the lands, before being defeated in battle by the first sovereign emperor, Qin Shi Huang, who in real life was the founder of the Qin Dynasty and the first emperor of a unified China. I also thought it was interesting to note that Lopan was also based on Chinese mythology, and was believed to have been a shadow emperor appointed by the first emperor who tried to seize power before being cursed for his treachery. After their fierce battle, the Emperor had in essence placed a curse of no flesh upon Lopan, which prevented him from inhabiting a physical body and by extension, stopped him from regaining his full might. While everyone assumed this would be the end of the tyrannical warrior, Lopan could temporarily be granted a decrepit body through supplication to the gods, and could even break the curse to regain his human form by marrying a special woman with green eyes. This act would appease Ching Dai, the god of the east, who was the source of Lopan's otherworldly powers. But in order to fully satisfy Ching Dai, the green-eyed woman would have to be sacrificed. After which Lopan would be able to transcend his weakened mortal form and ascend to a greater power that would enable him to rule the world unchallenged. For centuries, Lopan searched in anguish for a woman with green eyes and although he found a few over the years, none of them possessed the spirit required to appease the god of the east. 2,000 years and he can't find one broad to fit the bill? Come on, Dave, you must be doing something seriously wrong. There have been others, to be sure. There are always others, are there not? While Lopan rebuilt his empire, he utilized the skills of three elemental masters known as the Storms that aided him on his quest to become whole again. Disguising themselves as executives that worked for the Wing Kong Exchange, the three are thought to have been generals of Lopan that had fought alongside him during his rebellion against the First Emperor. And after showing their loyalty to the Sorcerer, it's believed that he had begun training them in dark magic. Samsung, object! Named Rain, Thunder and Lightning, each of them was a martial arts master that possessed control over the elements. Thunder had the ability to conjure green portals, possessed superhuman strength, and could even inflate his body like a balloon to deflect projectiles. Rain could unleash a powerful blast of air that pushed everything in its way, could fly using levitation, and summon rain, while Lightning had the ability to manipulate nearby electricity and atmospheric lightning to aid him in battle. Though Lopan was in a weakened state for most of his unnatural life, he still possessed incredible powers that made him a force to be reckoned with. While most people would simply perish due to the curse of no flesh, the Dark Sorcerer was able to use his spirit medium powers to bestow himself with longevity, enabling him to survive for centuries while he waited for a chance to recover. Lopan also possessed light manipulation, which allowed him to emit bright light from his mouth and eyes that induced temporary blindness in mortals, as well as hypnosis, as was seen with the numerous people he was able to place in a trance prior to forcing them to do his bidding. What's going on here? Is this some kind of- Magic. The darkest magic. My soul swims in it, scattered across time, trapped in the world of formlessness. Now under the alias of David Lopan, it was thought by most to be a crippled old man that was the head of the Wing Kong Exchange. Lopan used his influence to create the Wing Kong Gang, who were modern equivalents to his army of old. Using his soldiers, Lopan was able to kidnap two green-eyed women named Yin and Grace to fulfill his transformation, one of which was due to be married to her fiancé, Wang Chi, best friends of the film's protagonist, Jack Burton, who also happened to be sweet on the other green-eyed woman named Gracie Law, leading the pair along with another powerful wizard named Egg Shen to attack the headquarters of Lopan and interrupt the ceremony. Like his counterpart, Egg Shen, Lopan could project a destructive mystical beam that could virtually destroy anything it hit. However, when it encountered an opposite energy source, the beam would manifest into a swordsman that literally fought the energy beam in battle, as was seen when both Egg Shen and Lopan launched two opposing beams of light and dark energy at each other. This was also a telling moment in the film, as it revealed that both Egg Shen and Lopan were relative equals, leading me to suspect that it was actually Egg Shen who cursed Lopan under the orders of the Emperor centuries before their encounter in Little China. 
As a result of the curse of no flesh, Lopan was reduced to a non-corporeal entity that could pass through anything, which made it almost impossible to destroy him. However, when the curse of no flesh was eventually broken, allowing him to regain his mortality, this made him susceptible to damage, which coupled with his hubris and lack of appreciation for Jack Burton's reflexes led to his downfall. It's all in the reflexes. Big Trouble in Little China is a refreshingly bizarre, hilarious 80s action flick, showcasing John Carpenter at his best, and Kurt Russell in his prime as a John Wayne-esque cowboy dispatching bad guys with his reflexes and one-liners. James Hong and Victor Wong are also outstanding in their roles as wizards on the opposing sides of right and wrong, especially Hong, who is both terrifying and hilarious as a dark sorcerer keen on taking over the world. If you haven't seen this film, literally stop what you're doing right now, get a copy, and enjoy this cult classic. And if you have seen it, well, you're probably due for a rewatch. Well, that's all for today, folks. Big thanks to all of you guys who requested we take a look at Low Pan in the Storms, as featured in Big Trouble in Little China. Don't forget to hit subscribe and click the notification icon to stay up to date on all my content. And if there's anything else you'd like to request, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. Yes! Ah! 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 Ah!